Hey, Blenderbob here. Today we're going to talk about bevels. But before that, we're going to make a deal, you and I. If you learn one thing in this video, you're going to give me a like. If you learn two things, you're going to write a little comment. If you learn three things, you're going to subscribe. And if you learn four things, you're going to turn on the notification so you get a little message when I publish something new. But if you don't learn anything at all, don't give me a thumb down because it's not very nice. Okay, let's start. There are 45 species of kangaroos and wallabies. Bam! You just learned something. Come on, click on that like. We're gonna model a Mac Mini. Take a cube, squish it down, round the corners, save as. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. So, bevels? Everything is beveled everywhere. If you look at this chair, you can see the corner is worn out. So just go in sculpt mode, smooth, and just, you know, smooth the corner to make it more organic, less mechanical. By the way, if you have a scratch on wood, you can take one of these brainy nuts here and rub it like crazy and the scratch will disappear. Now you see, you just learned something else. Leave me a comment. Anatomy of a bevel. Here we have three edges. If we bevel them, it will create what I call outside edges. And you can see they all connect in the corners like this, here, 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 and here. And it creates quads, except for this one. This one is five-sided. So when you do the bevel tool, what the software will actually do is to merge the bottom edge, and then you have a quad at the bottom, another quad, another quad, so three quads. If we add another edge, well, same principle, it's just gonna adapt, and you see outer edges like this, and they keep connecting in their corners. Same idea, no matter how many edges you have. Now, please note that the center edges don't move. It only creates geometry around them. Why am I showing you this? Because sometimes you will get into trouble with bevels and you need to fix them. And if you don't know the theory of how they work, well, then it's going to be much harder. We will see later. This is a rendered version of the bicycle pedal I was showing you in part 2. You can clearly see all the bevel edges on it. The bevel modifier will not work on this object because it's too complex. I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried, but I just couldn't get it right. When I tried to adjust the hole on top to be circular instead of hexagonal, well then it would break everything else. This is a case where you have to use the bevel tool instead of the bevel modifier. Another thing you will realize with the bevel modifier is that every bevel will have the same size, but in reality, objects may have bevels of different sizes. This is a cube. This is a cube with a one segment bevel. Now why would you want to use this? We saw some examples in uh, part 2 with the kit bash stuff. If you do one of these huge bevels, make sure to add another small bevel on the corners just to make it more realistic. Let's try it, shall we? We're gonna make the front part of this speaker. Make a cube and scale it to the right dimensions. And don't forget to apply the transformations before you do the bevels. First we start with the bevels all around. Now we're gonna do that one segment bevel we were talking about. Hey, did you know you can bevel directly from the face? You don't need to select the edges. If the edges are not equidistant, you can use loop tool and space to fix it. You can actually do all the corners at the same time, it's gonna work. Did you know that? Okay, let's add more bevels to make it more realistic. So one here first, and then we do a second one on the front. Oops, you realize that on this bevel you only put one segment and you want to add more? Well, it's easy to fix. You just use the loop tool, you put it there, and you adjust the smoothness to get a perfect corner. Now you realize you don't have enough division in the corners, so you're going to try the same thing with the loop tool. You're going to try to insert an edge, and then you're going to play with the smoothness, and it doesn't work because this tool is broken. So let's move on to the next edge. We'll try this one, and surprisingly, it works on this one, but look at the result. It's ugly. So what are we going to do? Just insert edges, and then we're going to use a magic tool. It's a free add-on called Edgeflow, and I will put the link in the description, you know, right over the place where you're supposed to write comments. Set it to flow if you want it curved, set it to linear if you want a straight line. Alright, enough with this model. So two segment bevel is everybody's friend, but in this situation maybe it's not enough because it's a little bit too big. If we go to three segments, we don't want this because it creates a triangle here, even if it's a good triangle, it's not the best, and when you try to unfold the UVs, it's gonna be a nightmare to mark your seams. This is just a cube, but on a complex geometry, when you cut the seams like this, it can go all around the geometry, and it's not gonna be fun, and you don't want that. Okay, just stay with even numbers, two, four, six. See how easy it is on this one? Bam, bam, bam. 
The only reason you want six segments in this case is because of the edges. You want to make sure that the corners will look good. If you try to subdivide it to get better corners, you will get this thing that looks kind of inflated. That's because the resolution is just too low. So how can we fix that blender, Bob? Well, you can insert edge loops like this. It's going to give you a nice surface that you can subdivide, that you can sculpt, that you can do whatever you want with. But it's going to look a little bit rounder compared to the original one. It's not going to be as sharp. The closest I could find is to do like this one here. I inserted retaining edges just on the corners like this. And it looks pretty much like the original, even subdivided. You see, they're like twins. In 1960, the population of Burkina Faso was 4.96 million. There's no way you would have known about this. No way. Come on, subscribe, subscribe, we have a deal. We're gonna go back to the window frame we had in part one and we're gonna make it a sculptable surface. So we're gonna add some bevels and then we're gonna add some subdivisions. But here we have a problem because the polygons are really stretched. it's much better. Problem is, the small polygons get as many subdivisions as the big ones. Or maybe we can try this. We're gonna subdivide this model a few times in simple mode. We're gonna add a multi-res modifier. And you see, now we get equal polygons everywhere. So, what difference does it make? It's when you sculpt that you will feel the impact. If I smooth the edges, it works very well. If I do it on the previous model, it's not working as well. It's really hard to get rid of these edges. Here's a technique that you don't want to use. So we'll start with this very simple geometry. I don't know where this comes from, but I see a lot of junior modelers using this technique. The idea is to insert a lot of edge loops on the corners and then subdivide the model. Once you apply the subdivision on it, you get an awful lot of polygons. And what does it look like when it's textured? Oh, we have a problem. Look at the distortion here. And that's because the polygon gets stretched too much. This is a problem that happens sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. Why does it happen on this corner and not the other ones? I don't know. So, solution they do in this case? Well, they just add more edges, which are called retaining edges on the edge here. So now we have triple edge and more edges in the middle. So, does it work now if we apply the subdivision on it? Yeah. It's fine, but you get a very, very heavy geometry. Maybe we can do better. Now you may try your stuff and say, hey, well, in cycles it doesn't stretch, everything is okay. But remember, maybe your stuff will be rendered by Renderman, Garia, Arnold, Redshift, Clarice, Octane. They all react differently to subdivision and stretching. Renderman has four different settings for subdivision. If you don't use the right one for your model, it will stretch like crazy. Back to our basic geometry, we're gonna add a bevel modifier on it. We want to make sure that we are using angles and not the default one. Otherwise, we're gonna get the same thing that we want to avoid. You see that corner here? That's not good. See what happens when you subdivide it. The polygons actually go under the geometry and that's really bad. Easy solution, just change the outer to arc. And now you get this nice corner. It doesn't look too good when you apply the subdivision on it. Look at this, it's not very clean geometry and you got here this six pointed star thing. That's not good, we want to avoid that. Okay, turn the subdivision off. The problem is this corner polygon here, it's six sided. So just split it in two to get two quads. Make sure you apply the bevel modifier first knife tool. It looks good, it's clean, it's light. Did you spot that? That's a problem with Blender. When we did the bevel, it screwed up the UVs. When we apply subdivision on it, we get this absolutely horrible result. It's not a geometry problem, it's a UV problem. This is the exact same geometry, but I fixed the UVs and you can see it works perfectly. Told ya! The good thing about this technique is that you can turn on subdivision only if you need it. So you're gonna save a lot of memory. If you need to sculpt this geometry, you may want to use a little bit more resolution, like this. So you avoid these big triangular kind of faces in the corners. If you get issues in the corners, then you can always try the method I showed you before. Just make sure your polygons are not stretched, they stay square. Uh, that takes too long to explain. Just pause and read it. If you don't need to subdivide an object, don't do it! The fundamental principle of a subdivision surface is to have a low-res model that will render high at rendering time when subdivided. If your subdivision model turns out to be heavier before subdivision than if you just did a high-res model to begin with, then you completely miss the point. 
Every time you subdivide a model, it becomes four times heavier, four times more memory. If you divided level two, then it's 16 times. So be careful with the subdivision. Did you know that you would need to stack that many Big Macs to reach the surface of the moon? We just finished the deal, number four. Come on, notification. You just learned something great. All right, so we have this case here where the geometry changes. It just goes up like this and you already did your bevel. So can we fix it? Yeah, sure. We take the edge just like this one and this one. We bevel and we just need to fix the corner. That's pretty simple, right? So we click on this little vertex here, make sure the uh, merge is on, snap to vertex, and then just delete the edge in the center and you're done, right? That's easy, but now it's more complicated. We take these two edges, we bevel them, and we get an absolute mess. So let's do it one at a time. We do this one, and then we do the other one, but it doesn't look too good in the top. So remember the theory I told you about how to connect the edges, how it's supposed to work for bevels? You don't, so go back and watch it again. So we're just gonna connect the edges to fix everything the way it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to look like in theory, but I don't like these polygons here, the two big ones. I will just do a little cleanup. I will end up with two triangles, but it's still better than what we had before. You can feel the bad specular on the model on the right. This is the one we just did, and the other one was done with the bevel modifier. Make sure you fix your bevels if you modify the geometry later. Hey, remember in part one when I told you that quads don't react well to extreme twisting? This is a good example, look at this one. It's never gonna render well because it's really, really distorted. So you can easily fix that, just insert some edge loops and it's gonna render just fine. By the way, I dare you to twist a triangle. All right, I'm getting a headache with these bevels. Are you done yet? Eh, almost. A little bit more complicated. You had your geometry, you had your bevels, you modified the geometry, now you need to add more bevels. So you click and click and click and bevel and you created another big mess. Not good. Well, don't try to contact me. I don't do freelance anymore. This is how you're gonna fix it. Cut those bevels as far as you can. Select and dissolve the external edges. Merge all the vertices at the intersection. Select and bevel all the edges. And clean up that mess, will ya? Ba -da -da! Another possibility is Mesh Machine, an add-on, you have to buy it, but it's worth all the pennies. Just select two faces from the bevel and go unbevel and bang, it's gone. And do it again and bang and bang and bang. Much more problematic when you have more than two segments because you have to convert the corners into quad corners and you have to do it in the right order. But anyways, I'm not here to promote add-ons, I'm here to talk about my stuff. Alright, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time we're going to talk about sculpting on hard surfaces. Did I tell you about subscribing?